Don't worry about the harvest. It, all that matters is how many seeds you plant every day. It starts with this big picture where you structure it. Yeah. Then it's about thinking through how fast you want to grow. And then you look at your sectors and say, okay, these are the sectors I want to focus on. This is the percentage I want to do in each sector to meet my goal. Yeah. And here's the way I'm going to do it. Yeah. That's okay. how we do it. Okay. So there's three of those then. There's telephones, there's um, cameras are major. There's, there's a major then one. you should and separate audio. them okay. that way you know, then you set your goals based on your sectors, yeah. and that's how you focus. You should be able to manage your margins better by knowing the sector and what that sector gives you. Okay. Then what you end up doing is say, I want to do 20% of my business in this sector, 30% in this sector, 50% in this sector. Does that make sense? Then yeah. you set goals on the sectors. Okay. In order to bring focus, you have to know which products contribute the best mm -hmm. to your organization. You have to make them priorities, determine how much business out of each of these columns will you get to reach your goal of 100% growth. Okay. okay. Then what we have to do is start driving people to the website so that if you're doing 50 on your, 450 on your own, let's hope that the website contributes 250 or exactly. something, right? Yeah. Or 200. And then you go ahead and, you know, you're going to keep expanding and yeah. your word of mouth. You grow or die. Yeah. And by the way, that is true. Mm -hmm. If you go to somebody and you did 450, now you're doing 350, yeah. forget about it. Yeah. They want to see it. Yes. Yeah. So if you aren't growing, you are dying. Yeah. And now it takes thinking and planning. Mm -hmm. And people say, what do you do? What do you get paid for? And I say, I get paid to think. Yeah. You have to think this down to the, you know, the, the, the details yeah. of how you're going to actually execute and perform. And this is actually the roadmap. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We want to first establish a structure yeah. in which you can grow your company in an orderly way mm -hmm. with accountability and everybody connected and include it. That's the pyramid of success. And what you should focus on is the products that are kind to your company now in terms of acquisition, margin, okay? Clothing is easy to acquire. Yeah, it's so it's vast out there. It's so much. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you go into the stores today, what do you see? 50% off, 50% off, 50% off. Yeah. off. Yeah. Well, Here's what I want to get on, uh, get on the record is that in my company, I ran an electric, electronics company of a billion dollars yep. and I worked with everybody in the world. We have to talk about channels that you can actually go after. The channels are the big box, the um, clubs, um, catalogs. You need to employ social media to drive to you to the website where you have a shopping basket yeah. where they can actually buy on the spot mm -hmm. or ask you a question yeah. or leave your number. Mm -hmm. So now once you grow your database, <laughs> think, of the, think of the marketing you can do when they've already bought an antique and you know they're antique lovers, yeah. so you can actually be proactive and go to them and say, we've got some new antiques. Yeah. I would actually say your number one priority is your website. I truly believe that the website and the name could help a lot other than pure execution yeah. and focus, which is right here and for you to decide. Yeah. So I would say name, Second is uh, the website needs to be selling, working for you. Yeah. I mean, it really has to be. And they have to be able to buy things or ask questions of you. Yeah. All right. My dad always said, don't work for your money, let your money work for you. Yeah. I think social media, the website is, I think, very big. Also, what I would tell you is trade shows are very good. Okay.
That's so you can talk to every company in the world of yeah. electronics just by going up to the Consumer Electronics Show, get a pass, yeah. and go around with your card. Yeah. And just say, we work with major vendors to help them liquidate B-goods. Goods. Mm -hmm. It's a return, mm -hmm. and they can't sell it as new. Mm -hmm. It goes back brand new. The box hasn't been cracked, but we are not allowed by law to sell it as a new product. It's a bee good. Yeah. So everybody in the world has bee goods. Mm -hmm. It's all about focus on the sectors that give you, yeah. and there may be a new sector that comes out. Yeah. I think where we ought, we ought to go is at, figure out how to go after the people we want. Identify who the people we want in the sector. Yeah. I would start with the Phoenix Business Journal, Book of Lists. Book of Lists, okay. The Phoenix Business Journal publishes the top companies, the top 50 best companies in Arizona. Yeah. It covers every industry sector there is. Yeah. Amazing. Why wouldn't we be talking to the best 50 companies in each of your business sectors mm -hmm. directly? Yeah. Just, and it's right there in front of you. Yeah. So you have to have what I would call a target list. Okay. So we had that channel, we had the antiques, but medical and electronics, we don't know how. We just do the one-off stuff. Okay, well, electronics is not hard. Okay. Medical was changing very quickly because of technology. Mm -hmm. And what we have today is 30 years ahead of what some European companies may have, or countries may have. Now, would it be a dentist? Yeah. Okay. Now, my dentist just hosted 50 dentists. Yeah. If he has stuff, he'll tell all of his friends. Mm -hmm. This is what we want. Yeah. Okay. We don't want you out there in this heat huffing and puffing and doing calls. Mm -hmm. So you get volume, and you know, we're not worrying about onesies, we're getting 25 at a time of yeah. this or that. That's okay. what I want for you. Yeah, that's right. Then you're like, oh man, product acquisition, shit, we better start selling, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and also, it Phil, you can also do updates on your website. Brand new this, brand new that. Even though they're in antiques, they may say, shit, I need a phone. <laughs> Thank you, sir. The uh, name is doesn't say what you do, yeah, and that bothers me okay. because I like to know exactly what that does. Okay. Wall Street, what you learn is you have to describe your company in one sentence. One sentence. Yeah. So when you're up there and one of those investors say, "What do you do?" You have to say it in one sentence. Mm -hmm. The same applies to your name. You want to see it and get it. Yeah. So mine was Go Video. Yeah. I changed it to Sensory Science yeah. because everything we were doing was, you know, a goo of the interface and uh, it was all um, sensory. I mean, you, what we created was so fabulous for your eyes, your ears, and you know. And, and I do believe that the website and the name are the biggest. Okay. I really do. I just do. I, I just believe that. Let's get somebody working for you quick. Like once you establish it, it'll come to you. Yeah. So what I'd be looking for is to give total clarity about what it is you do on your website. Now I think after our talk, you probably know the website doesn't covers the whole thing. It doesn't really tell the whole story. Yeah. You know, so what you want them to know is how broad you are. Yeah. And you know, I always said I was the best in the world, even though I wasn't. But who's going to go ahead and try to prove I'm not? Yeah, that's possible. So, you know, don't be afraid to puff out your chest. Say we're the best. Mm. Say that nobody can beat us. Right? Yeah. And be bold. Be bold. Be who you want to be later now. Yeah. Sometimes you have to act like you're the present before you become the present. Always, right? We've gotten our clients three, four 
um, times what our competitors get them. See, testimonial letters on the website yeah. would be incredible to yeah. have. I know, actually. Okay. Okay, but you, as the CEO, have to have a pipeline report. Explain what that is. A pipeline report is essentially Henry has, let's just say, three deals in um, Antique. He names the company, contact, and next steps. Okay. And the value of the deal. Okay. Okay, and maybe when it'll close. So a pipeline report is very simply, and this is critical to investors, they want to know not only what your sales are, what's in the pipeline. And you'll hear that word over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. What every one of my rep firms was doing in all the client, because I had to know how much I was ordering, because I need to know how much money I had. Mm -hmm. Remember who to call, when to call back. Mm -hmm. And if somehow something happened to Henry, he quit. Yeah. Well, you take his pipeline hand to the new guy. Yeah. You don't lose anything. True. Sure. Well, the pipeline is your a management tool, and you and your CFO will look at it. And then what we did is, when my salesman would make a projection, we'd go, cut it by 40%, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then we'd say, he never had a number yet. Yeah. We cut it to 40%, and then we'd run our numbers off what we thought. Yeah. And if he exceeded, oh, Here's the most important thing I want to tell you both. It, don't worry about the harvest. It, it, all that matters is how many seeds you plant every day. The harvest will come if you're planting seeds. This will tell you who's planting seeds and who ain't. You get it? So, so like, the way I like to do it is just say, look, don't, don't ask me what I want, just tell me what you can do and then do it. So I never put pressure on anybody. Yeah. No matter what, I just want to know what you can do, yeah. not what you hope to do, but what you're gonna do. Yeah. 